Amen. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Pray the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. Mighty One of Jacob. The mighty One of Jacob. King of Kings. King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Our reading scripture will be from Psalms 37, 5 through 9. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the new day. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man, he bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for even doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. May the Word of the Lord in his hearing and doing. Bless every ear that hears. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And peace be unto you in the name of Jesus. Peace, peace. peace. peace to everyone that's watching on Facebook Live, and peace to everyone that is here. And we welcome all the newcomers to Israel, the Church of Jesus, where we teach, we teach the scriptures based on topics, line upon line, precept upon precept, hey little, there little, and Lord willing, we got a, a lot of Bible to explain itself so you can get some understanding. And today, the topic that we are dealing with, it's, uh, you know, for, for some of us who've been in this book for a little bit, you know, uh, this should be an easy lesson to understand. You know, the title in itself, The King of Peace Brings War, you know, that, that could confuse a lot of uh, people we call Sunday worshipers, they go to church on Sundays. And it, could, it could confuse a lot of them. Because first of all, we know who the King of Peace is. According to the scriptures, the King of Peace is Melchizedek. Right? That is who the King of Peace is. But what a lot of individuals don't know is who is Melchizedek? Who is that individual? Because the book says he had no ending, he had no beginning, he had no descent. So that can only be one or two people, unless there's three gods we don't know about. We already know it's not three gods, there's only two. The Father, which name is Jesus, and the Son, who we know of as Jesus the Christ. There's only two gods, but yet there's another individual by the name of Melchizedek that's only brought up maybe three or four times in the scriptures that also have the same characteristics as the individual we know of as Jesus. You know, some people have problems with the name Jesus it's all the same between me, for me. Uh, just understand who you're talking to. Some cats be reading the Old Testament and thinks that's the Father. And they need to know that Jesus the whole time. Matter of fact, that's Melchizedek. And that's what we're going to uh, figure out right here. We're going to go ahead and read these scriptures. And we're going to pinpoint this individual that brings war. And we're going to look at the similarities between Jesus and Melchizedek. And then we're going to take a look at how he brings war. Exactly what, he, what it is he's going to do. He do the same thing he did before, but we're going to check that out anyways. Just to fill up time. So we're going to start this off at Genesis 49. We're going to start this off at Genesis 49. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. 
it's a prophecy that Jacob is given. It's prophecies and blessings. And this spells out everything. That's why I don't understand people who had a hard time knowing or believing in Jesus. He's all he's all over the Old Testament. Even if you don't know or want to say the name Jesus, you should have enough understanding that know that God that came and died for the sins of man is the same individual we read in the Old Testament. The same one. Genesis 49 and 1. 49 and 1. Go ahead, bro. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. So one of the big key points I want to point out here that Jacob is about to tell blessings and give prophecies about stuff that's going to happen in the last days. This is during our time. Alright? Now skip down to verse 8 because Judah is the crux of all of this. So we're going to go ahead and pick up at verse 8. Go ahead. Judah, thou art whom thou art he whom Thy brethren shall praise. Uh -huh. Thy hand shall be in the in the neck of thy enemies. So off top, we see extreme violence. It says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. You see, you praise Judah because what? He say we are Jews. It's come from the head tribe. So a Jew is nothing but a short term for Judah. That's right. Since the since the father, since the master, since the king, our priest, he came through the line of Judah. So everybody that attached himself to him say that they're Jews. So that's how he Judah is getting the constant praise already. Thou art whom the brethren shall praise, thy hands shall be in the neck of thy enemies. That's some that's some things right there that people don't want to talk about. That in the last days, Judah is gonna have his foot on his enemy's neck. You gotta pick which side you wanna be on. Cause that's some real stuff right there. Someone say, hey, my foot gonna be on your neck. You gonna stand up, put up your guards. Load up your gun, do whatever you need to do. No, you can put your foot on my neck. But that's what we read in here. That, hey, this dude will come with some problems. Keep going. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Uh-huh, he's going to be the head of every tribe. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the, from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Uh-huh, so it said Judah is a lion's whelp. The young lion, timid. That's what that means, timid lion. From a prey, my son, thou art gone up. Keep going. He stooped down. He couched as a lion, and as an old lion, he shall rouse him up. So verse 9, often, when I when I read that, I I, I see Simba. And some of us watch, I grew up on Lion King. I watched Lion King like once a month. So this new Lion King that came out, I was there all by myself. My family wasn't there. I don't care. I'm excited. Right? But this is what I think of when I see this. Because that's how Simba was when he was little. You know, he used to try to growl at little insects. Everybody was like, man, whatever. I don't know. But nevertheless, when he was grown, now everybody paid him respect. Everybody was like, nah, this is the king here. He coming back for what is his. Everybody was either running from him or trying to keep what was theirs to try to fight him. Because that's the same thing that's going to happen when, when Jesus comes back. The same exact thing. So that's what I think of when I read it. It said, Judas is a lion well from the prey, my son, thou art going up. He stooped down, he is crouched. And as, a, and as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, uh -huh. nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Keep going. Until Shiloh come, and until him, unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Okay, so it says the scepter shall not depart from Judah. So that's another word from a crown, like a crown. So this individual will have some royalty. The, the tribe of Judah will have some royalty. Right? The scepter will not depart from Judah's feet. Nor the law give, nor the law give it from between his feet. So he's gonna set some rules. He's gonna be running things. He's the king, and he set the laws until Shiloh come. And it's not until Shiloh come in the sense where uh, everything gonna be different when Shiloh come in the sense where Judah won't have the crown anymore. No, things gonna be different. It's gonna move to a different age when Shiloh come. It's going it shows you something different that's about to happen. And Shiloh means peace. That's what Shiloh means. So already we see the king of peace here, which is Shiloh. We're an individual that is known as Shiloh. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the law given from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall be the gathering of the people be. So Shiloh is going to bring everybody together. So we see the peace here already. You see that? Everybody going to come together. Everybody going to be one. Once Shiloh gets here. Verse 11. Binding his foil unto the vine, 
and his ass is coat unto the choice vine. Uh huh. So we we know you know this right here is a prophecy. We can read this prophecy again in Zechariah, but this points to Jesus. When he showed up, this is exactly what he did. He came on riding on the donkey. He riding on the ass. The ass is a symbol of peace. Somebody going back in the day, somebody riding up on you, and they ride on a donkey. You're not taking that no. Right. This is nothing. He he want to talk or he want something to eat. Who knows? But he run up on you with some horses and some chariots. Now you know, hey, so he wants some. He got some problem. He want to talk about. You see what I'm saying? So that's why the donkey was such a big key when Jesus Christ showed up, and it's such a big key now because Shiloh was being peace going to show up on a donkey. Body his foe unto the vine, and his ass was made a dope. I mean, was made a donkey. The coat of the uh, coat unto the choice vine. Keep going. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Then right after you read that, we see what? He killed the people. <laughs> right after we see that, we see he's killing people. So this is like a misconception here. Some, it might be hard for some individuals to understand this. Shiloh, which means peace, when he come, he's going to bring everybody together, and he's going to come lowly, timid, but yet he's killing people. Yeah, it's telling you the story from when Jesus Christ told us, a little bit before then, all the way till he come back. This right here spells it out. The king of peace that brings war. The king of peace that brings war. We're going to go to Isaiah 9 now. And we're going to look at it again in a different, from a different mouth. Isaiah 9. So the king of peace is going to come to bring this war in order to establish peace. That's the only way he can come established kingdom. Everywhere now since the days that we know of you can't be nothing, you can't say anything unless you have some power. That's why everybody want atomic bombs. That's why everybody want a million man army or try to team up with somebody that has strength because that's how they get their word across. Other than that, you, you, you are nothing. So when Jesus Christ comes back who is the king of peace, he has to come back with some muscle. Or we all just not going to pay attention to him kind of like what we did already when he showed up. Isaiah 9 and 6. Isaiah 9 and 6. Go ahead. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Uh -huh. So unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. This is a prophecy, right? It kind of stems off of the prophecy that we can read in Isaiah 7 when it talks about uh, a woman, a virgin woman that's going to give birth. By name is Emmanuel, which means son of God with us. That's what Emmanuel means. So we see that a God is supposed to come through a virgin. And this right here kind of picks up after that. A lot of you, a lot of individuals read Isaiah 7 and Isaiah 9 back to back with each other because it spells everything out. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. So this is something that's coming. Keep going. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. So he's going to have some power. He's going to be in charge of some type of government. So that's something to take heed of. Because that's what we read on from, from what we read in Jacob, from Jacob, an individual by the name Shiloh should be coming, and he's going to establish something, and all the people are going to be drawn to him. So this is a big deal. So the government should be upon his shoulders, and what else? And his name shall be called Wonderful. Wonderful. That's the name. So all these are titles. And his name shall be called Wonderful. One, a lot of individuals say this wonder came from because of, of, of the virgin birth. It's such a wonder. But that was just some scholars say you can take it or leave it. It is what it is. But wonderful, keep going. Counselor. Counselor is another name for king. We can read that in uh, Micah 4, I believe. It talks about a king you're going, hey man, your king going, your king going, where your counselor at? What's going on? It runs synonymous. So we see that the government gonna be on somebody's shoulders, a son that is coming, and he's gonna be he gonna be called wonderful, counselor, which is king. Keep going. The mighty God. The mighty God. Keep going. The everlasting father, uh -huh. the prince of peace. So a son is going to be coming, and he's going to be known as the everlasting father. Some people, like, like I said, we always dealt with Jesus. He is known as the everlasting father and the prince of peace. Was that what Shiloh means, priest? So this individual, this son, will be known of that. Keep going, verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So once he come and establish all of this, He's running forever. There's no end. You're not stopping this. So this is something that we still currently waiting on. We know that it's not here as of yet. Because ain't no peace here. At all. 
People gotta walk around strapped up, scared to go to Walmart because somebody can come up and just light up everybody. There ain't no peace here, right? People scared to put kids in schools, all of this stuff. So we know this is something that we are waiting on. And this peace will last forever. There'll be no end, keep going. Upon the throne of David and upon his crown, his kingdom. Okay, so it coming from Judah, David came from Judah, so that's how we know it's still in line with Genesis 49. Keep going. To order it. Uh-huh. And to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. Uh -huh. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Let me go to Micah 5. Micah 5. So we see that we are waiting on this individual that brings peace. We have to see if he showed up and what happened and what's going on then. Because apparently, this shallow dude gonna be right with his toes and blood. We gotta figure out what time period that is. Cause we, we don't wanna get messed up in that, be caught up in that. Who is this dude that's bringing peace that's gonna have blood all over his garments? Micah 5, well, man, man, I say. Micah 5, and pick up that first one, you there? Yes. Micah 5 and one, go ahead. Now gathering thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. Uh -huh, so he said, gather yourself in troops, O daughter of troops. So he's talking to an army. He said, get yourself together. Keep going. He hath laid siege against us. Uh huh. They shall meet, smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the, of the cheek. So when did this happen? This happened when Jesus got smacked on, on the cheek. So this is a prophecy that is coming about. He says, gather yourself. It says, now gather thyself in troops, or daughter of troops. He had laid siege against us. He had laid siege against us. What's up, brother? They shall smite the judge of Israel with the rod upon the cheek. Keep going, verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, uh -huh. thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. So we see it again in Micah, so apparently it hasn't happened yet. And it's still confirming everything that we read that, that Jacob said. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, that's the big deal, that's from Jew, that, that's the land of Jew, that's where David was born at, that's where Jesus was born at. Though thou be little among thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. So we see that we still in Micah, thousands of years after Genesis, hundreds of years after Genesis, we still waiting on this individual to come to rule over Israel. We still wait on that. David has already happened. Solomon has already happened. Right now, during Micah time, this is when uh, the, the, the uh, kingdom is split. So we see we are already in our kingsmanship, but we're still waiting upon this king or this individual to rule Israel. Keep going. Whose goings forth have been from all of old, from everlasting. So that's the big key. So this king, this ruler of Israel, his coming forth will be from old and unto everlasting. So it's synonymous to Isaiah 7 with Emmanuel, God with us. So this individual is from old. So he's always been around. So that's already to God David. So this individual who's forever lasting, like I said, I'm going to wait on that. He's forever lasting, right? He's from old, from everlasting. Keep going. Verse 3. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which tra travaileth have brought forth. So what does that mean? Therefore will he give them up. He's going to be done with them. There's a period of time from what? Uh, Malachi all the way to Matthew there was no prophets according to what we can read in the scriptures there's nothing around no information of God until this child came therefore will he give them up until that she which surveillance had brought forth talking about Mary, talking about that virgin everything is still lining up the only new thing that we have here is that he is from old and from everlasting and we're going to look at him from old. If that's the case, if that's what we read in the scriptures, we, we should be able to go in the scriptures and figure that out and read that. Right? It says, then the, uh, therefore will he give them up until the time that she, which travailed, had brought forth, keep going, 
Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. And then Israel will come back. And then he might gather a remnant of Israel. Not everybody. He's still going to be a stumbling block, which we know well from other scriptures. This individual is going to be a stumbling block. So only a few, uh, probably of Israel is blind, so all the, everybody else can come in. But with that scripture, we see that only a few, only a remnant is holding on to Jesus. But we see that here. It says, the remnant of his brethren, not all, the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Keep going. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the, of the Lord. What did he feed? The word of God. He's teaching. He's preaching. He's feeding them, giving them what they need. Man shall not live by bread alone, right? Mm -hmm. And he says, stand and feed. He shall, the individual that come forth, that's from everlasting, Feed in the strength of the Lord. Keep going. In the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. In the majesty of the name. Another name of another meaning of majesty is royalty, kingdom. In the majesty of the name of the Lord. In his name. What name he came in? Jesus. That's some power. That shows some kingsmanship right there. That shows some royalty power. Right there. That's what we see. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord. In the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. So he's coming in his God's name. And it, it's the majesty of it. Keep going. And they shall abide. And they're going to be one. They shall abide together. Keep going. For now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. Uh -huh. From that time, he's going to be great all the way to the ends of the earth. Which that's what happened, right? We can read that in Isaiah. It says, it's a light thing for you to come and bring, uh, bring Jacob back. I'm going to bring you to... I want you to bring out the Gentiles so you can be uh, Lord from all the way from the ends of the earth. Everybody know who you are. And I paraphrase that a little bit. But I believe that's in Isaiah 49. Pick it up at verse 5. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we see that this man that's going to show up, that's going to rule Israel. And he's from old and everlasting. Verse 5. And this man shall be the peace. He shall be the what? The peace. So this man shall be the peace. So we reign on somebody to be that peace. Is this man right here. And we know who that is already. You already know who that is. And this man shall be the peace. Keep going. When the Syrians shall come into our land. Uh -huh. So how is he talking about the past? No, how, how are you talking about future events? But yet he's bringing up Assyria. What's going on in his present day. Well, the Assyrians is his current enemy. That's his enemy as of right now. So when he said he's going to, it says that, and this man shall be peace when the Assyrians are coming to our land. So he's just giving you a representative that this individual will be our peace when our enemies come upon us. Like nowadays, uh, Brother Fontaine did a lesson how uh, we all talk about how the Gentile is our enemy and all this stuff and all that stuff. But a couple years ago, it was the Syrians. Before then, it was who we was fighting in judges. So we have multiple enemies. Right. But here, Micah is using Assyria because during his time, the Assyrians were their main enemies. The Assyrians are trying to come over and take over the whole world. So it says that this man, who is the peace that should be brought forth from a woman who is from old and everlasting, he will be our peace, comma, and when the Assyrians shall come into our land, what will happen? And when he shall tread in our, pla our palaces, uh -huh. then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. So it says... Once the Assyrians come, because of this peace we have, because of this man, we're going to be able to fight back. We're going to have seven shepherds. We're going to have seven men. Matter of fact, this is not in the lesson, but go ahead and keep reading. Because I'm going to show you what's going to come after this, when our enemies come into our land because of our peace. Keep going. And they shall waste the land of Assyria. They shall do the what? Sword. Waste the land. So this king, which is the peace, going to have going to bring some problems. Hey, you're going to mess with mine. Yeah, I'm all about peace, but you mess with mine if you want to. And I'm going to lay a Syria land down, which is just a form of our enemies. Just a, a whole to stand all of our enemies. Specifically, we can read that uh, Edom is one of the individuals that he's going to lay down. Esau is one of them. It says, And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword, and the land of Nimrod, and the entrances thereof. Keep going. Thus shall he deliver us from the Syria, uh -huh. when he cometh into our land, and when he treadeth within our borders. Verse 7. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people, uh -huh. as a dew from the Lord, as the showers upon the grass, 
that Terry is not for man. So now we see after he finished laying down his enemies, laying down our enemies, now we chilling. Now the remnant of Israel chilling. So we see this individual who bring peace, he also bringing that war with him. He also bringing that sword with him. And that's Melchizedek, which is Jesus, who we know of as Jesus. It's one and the same. Because we're going to read in Psalms 110, it says a prophecy that says Melchizedek is going to come with the sword and kill everybody. But nobody reading that part. And then we read in Hebrews, which we will read also, that Jesus Christ is in the same manner, the same tongue as Melchizedek. It's one and the same. So it should be safe to say that he's coming with the sword. That's how Paul and Peter was able to baptize so many individuals in Acts. Because he used Malachi, said, hey, we're not drunk here. We all, it's only the third hour of the day. We all just speaking in tongues and stuff because it was written in Malachi. No, no, not Malachi, Jarrell. It was written in Jarrell that all of this stuff would come to pass. And then after it came to pass, the dreadful day of the Lord would come. The moon would be black. Uh, the sun won't give its light. And he was telling them that to bring fear to them, like, hey, you know what comes after this. This is the man we've been waiting for. Next come the sword. So that's how he was able to baptize everybody. And we see in that here that it's saying the same thing it's saying here, the same thing we said in Genesis, and the same thing that uh, we will continue reading it, it says in Psalms. Matter of fact, I'm going to slow it down. Let's go to Hebrews 7. We're going to look at the similarities between this son to come, which we know is Jesus, and Melchizedek. Hebrews 7, and pick it up at verse 1. I ain't, I'm not losing no one, am I? Nope. We good? good? Hebrews 7, and verse 1. I kind of understand what Font be saying now. I feel like I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> but it's all good. Hebrews 7, and verse 1. We're going to look at the uh, comparison of this king of peace. Go ahead. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. We can read that in Genesis 14. Keep going. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. Uh-huh. First being, first being by interpretation, king of, of righteousness. He's just a king of righteousness. That's who he is. He's the king of righteousness. But that title got given to somebody else. We're going to read that. Keep going. And after that, also king of Salem. Uh -huh, which means what? Which is king of peace. So this is the king of peace, who we are known of, who, who we know of. Right? Keep going. Verse 3. Without father. Uh-huh. Without father. Without mother. Uh-huh. Without descent. Keep going. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Uh-huh. But made like unto the Son of God. Abide, abideth a priest continually. So this individual Melchizedek, 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 how you want to pronounce it, he was, that, he was without father and without, without mother, without descent. There's some individuals that want to sit here and say, oh, yeah. they, they will say, he only don't have a father or mother because there's no record. He came after the flood. Everything was destroyed in the flood. That's why he doesn't have any record. That's why we don't know who he is. But the scripture also said he is without descent, meaning he didn't come from no line. So he can't come from Salem or us, us, uh, um, Ham, Japheth, or uh, Shem at all because if that was the case, he would be descended from somebody. But the scripture spe specifically said he was without descent. So this individual was there from the beginning of time. That's what we read, right? We can't take, up, we can't take it any way other than that because he spelled it out. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor in the life, but made life unto the Son of God, which is Jesus Christ, abide, abided a priest continually. So he was living, he is living forever, just like the Son of God. So either we have the Father, who we know was forever, Jesus, which we know <coughs> had no beginning of days, no end of life, and we have Melchizedek. So there's three gods. What? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Melchizedek and Jesus is one and the same. They've been one and the same. They have always been. Because we can read in the scripture that it says, the Lord had never talked to no other nation but Israel. 
right? He gave Israel for Nazareth, Israel for prophets. Salem, at this time, would have been a Hamite nation. So if it's a Hamite nation, the king would have been a Hamite. So he's going to be a priest forever? So he, so the Lord have a Hamite as his priest while there's Abraham there? Absolutely not. So we already know this can't be no flesh and blood man. No way. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth the priest continually. Let's keep it up in verse 23. Go ahead. And they truly were many priests uh -huh. because they were not uh, suffered to continue by reason of death. So that's why there's so many priests because after death, they're done. So you got to continue having more priests and more priests. That was only with the Leviticus priesthood. But this man, verse 24. But this man, because he continues forever, have an unchangeable priesthood. So Melchizedek is still continuing. He was continuing back then. He is continuing now. Now we know him as Jesus. And that's the inner vision that's going to come back with a sword. He's going to come back and he brings war. 25. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost thought, uttermost that come unto God by him. Uh -huh. Seeing he ever liveth, ever liveth to make a, a intercession for them. Now let's go to Psalms 110. Now we're going to look at this prophecy a little bit more too. Let's go to Psalms 110. Psalms 110 and pick it up at verse 7. Psalm, give me one. Psalms, Psalms 110 verse 1. So we see the similarities in Melchizedek and Jesus. And unless the Bible was lying, there's more than just two gods. People don't even know that there's two gods. They think it's just one. They wanted the same inner body, out the body, around the body. He put on different hats like he, uh, <laughs> you know, trying to make it seem like he has some mental problems. You know, like, uh, Okay, but yeah, schizophrenic or something. No, that's, that's not it. It's two individuals, just like a marriage. But now we see this third member who's been around, but he just changed his name. Like I said, Jesus is the man of many titles. He was known as Jehovah. That's a name that none of them knew. Right? We, we can read in the, um, in the um, Bible dictionary that Jehovah was so sanctioned. I mean, so, uh, uh, it was so... Thank you. It was so sacred. I'm, I can't. I'm, my mouth is super dry. Whatever. So take that. <laughs> so it was so sacred. The fact that they didn't want to put Jehovah. So they put Lord or Jah or whatever the case may be or God. So we see that individual. We know him as Jehovah. We know him as Lord God. We know him as Emmanuel. We know him as. He had all these different names. And Melchizedek is just another name of his. Is this another name of his? Psalms 110 and uh, verse 1. Go ahead. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. And I don't, when people read this, I really believe that it goes over their head that he is thinking about killing somebody somehow, some way, or ruling somebody. And he said, I'm going to make your enemy, my enemy, your enemies your footstool. Until I make thy enemies thy footstool. That's not something you will say to somebody just all willy vanilla, man. Like I said, these are fighting words. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit down on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Verse 2. The Lord shall send the rod of, the, of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Uh -huh. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. And in the beauties, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast to do of thy, of thy youth. So from verses 1 through 3, what I got out of that is the kingship. I see some type of royal power right here. The Lord shall send the rod of strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. So what I see in some type of kingship here. Verse 4. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So he's speaking to somebody. It's a prophet, it's prophecy here. But he said, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Even, so it's either, A, Melchizedek never really existed, right? Or the Lord is making up something about this dude named Melchizedek that really died, but said that you were a priest forever. No, he really existed. That's not under, well, we know him as Melchizedek. We know him now as Jesus. But now we're starting to see the priesthood. So we see the kingship. 
Because in uh, Isaiah 9, it says this individual will be a king. We see that. Now we see in the priesthood as well. From verse down, verse, from verse 4 down. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Verse 5. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike and through kings in the day of his wrath. Now, who is sitting at his right hand? According to what we read in here. Melchizedek. According to what we read in here in Psalms 110, he's sitting at the Lord's right hand. And we just read that the Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Melchizedek means king of peace, right? Isn't he the king of peace? Yeah. King of Salem and the king, but nevertheless he had wrath? Yeah, he had wrath. That's what he's coming with. Verse 6. He shall judge, uh, judge, he shall judge among the heathen. Uh -huh, so even the heathen going to follow him. Keep going. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He's going to fill the whole places up with dead bodies. He's killing these cats. Melchizedek he is. Do we not understand? The king of peace is doing this. Yeah, he's doing this. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. Keep going. He shall wound the heads over many countries. You think he's running something? No, I'm running something. We can read that in Daniel as well. Verse 7. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. Uh-huh. So now we're going to keep going. Let's go to Hebrews 1. Now we're going to move over to Hebrews 1. So we see that the king of peace is actually free. It's in the scripture, so it has to happen. We read Shiloh. Is going to come in his body, his vessel is going to be dipped in blood. We read that in Genesis 49. So it has to happen. Hebrews 1. And pick it up at verse 1. Hebrews 1 and verse 1. Go ahead. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in, the, in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Uh huh. So back in the day, he was talked to about the prophets. He was talked to and talked about because of the prophets. Verse 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. Who is Jesus Christ? Keep going. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things. He's the heir of all things. By what? By whom also he made the world. So this individual also made the world. So we can read that in John 1.1. 1, 1, and also in Colossians and all these other places as well. So we see that Jesus is from old and everlasting. Just like how many of Melchizedek were. We see that. Verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Whose glory? Who, who person? The Father. Mm -hmm. When you see, that's why he said, uh, brother, if you see me, you see the Father. Because he came in his image. He came in his glory. We read that in Malachi, he's going to sing the, he's going to share the same majesty of name, which is Jesus. Keep going. And upholding all things by the word of his power. Uh -huh. And when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So we just read in Psalms 110 that Melchizedek sitting on the right hand of the Father. And now we read that Jesus Christ is also sitting on the right hand of the Father. So what, they make it wrong? <laughs> nah, they one and the same. They both one and the same. Skip down to verse 8. Go ahead. But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness. A scepter of righteousness. Scepter means rulership. Rulership, some type of royalty power. But we see that Melchizedek is a king of righteousness, but now we see that that was given to the Son. Because it says right here, But thou, but unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. And the scepter of righteousness is what? It's the scepter of thy kingdom. So he have a kingdom. Keep going. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Uh-huh. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. He even called this individual God. Yeah, he is a God. He's the God that we pray to. We don't pray to the Father. We pray to Jesus. The Father never dealt with man at any time. Verse 10. And thou, thy, uh, and thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth. Uh -huh. And the heavens are the works of thine hands. Keep going. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. Uh -huh. And as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. So we now we're starting to see how he is everlasting as well. 
That's what we just read. He says, that they shall perish, meaning the heavens, the foundation of the heavens and the whole world. He said, they shall perish, but thou remainest, meaning the sun. He will remain. And they all shall wax old as doth the garment, and as the vessel shall thou fold them up, and thou shalt be changed, and, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and the years shall not fail. So it says, uh, God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, right? right. So we see that again here, verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand, and until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Not once. So we can see that he's even above the angels, verse, verse 14. And are they not all ministering spirits? Uh -huh. Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. So they just are the workers of the Lord. So we, we still we see that Jesus Christ is from everlasting. He created everything. He had the king of righteousness. He had that title. He is the son to come. So he had the prince of peace. He had that title. So we see the comparison between Melchizedek and Jesus. How it's one and the same. It's absolutely one and the same. They both sit on the right hand of the Father. Now let's go to Hebrews 5. Let's look at this priesthood. Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5, and pick it up at verse 1. Hebrews 5, and verse 1. Go ahead. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God. Uh-huh. So every high priest that's taken from men is ordained from men in things pertaining to God. So other men ordained these high priests, right? Moses ordained uh, Aaron. And so and Aaron did everything, so on, so on and so forth. Keep going. That he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Uh -huh, that, was, that was the priest's job. Verse 2. Who can have compassion on the ignorant uh -huh. and on them that are out of the way? Right, so they take hold of that compassion. If somebody sin without having the knowledge, they would go do a sacrifice. They would have compassion on them with individuals that sin out of ignorance and on them that are out of the way, individuals that are far out, they don't know what does say the Lord, they learn. Keep going. For that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. Uh huh. Keep going. And by reason that he, hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. Uh huh. And no man taketh his uh, this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. Yep. So nobody else can do this but of Aaron. That's the only individual. Verse five. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made. And high priest. Nah, he didn't do it. He read that in Psalms that like you are a priest to get you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So the Father gave him this title. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest. Keep going. But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Uh-huh, keep going. As he said also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So we know specifically who he's talking about now. I know I've been saying the name of Jesus, but now we can see that that's who he is speaking of. He's speaking of Christ. Verse 7. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and all and was heard in that he, he feared. Uh -huh. I'm talking about John 17. He was sitting there praying and weeping, talking about, please give me what I had before. Lord, if you can't take this cup away from me. That's what he's speaking of right there. Keep going, verse 8. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Uh -huh. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. The author all. of eternal salvation. The same thing Melchizedek is. The author of eternal salvation. Keep going. Unto all them that obey him. Uh -huh. And called, uh, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Uh -huh. So he had that same title. So like I said before, it was just pretty much him doing things in the spirit, then he coming in the flesh and showing us how it be, how we can get that same salvation. So we could have that same ordership as well. Once we die and we, we, we get lifted up in the first resurrection, we're going to be a priest with God for a thousand years. We'll be under that same priesthood of Melchizedek as Jesus Christ was. But we see in it how it plays out, how it lines up, how these are the same individuals. Now, to understand that and to reconcile that and to, and to see that when he come back and bring peace and he, when he comes and bring war, we will have to see how he brings war and what manner does he bring war. Is he bringing the war like we know of? Is it in a different sense 
But we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 10 and we're going to see that how it plays out. We're going to go back and see him in time past and see, and see how he operate in time past so we can get a better glimpse of how he's going to do and what we can expect in the future. 1 Corinthians 10. This right here is an oldie but goodie. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 1. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. Go ahead. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. So he go, he's going back to our history, talking about specifically the time we came out of Egypt mm -hmm. with Moses. Right. That's what he's speaking of. Verse 2. And were all baptized un unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Uh -huh. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. Keep going. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank that they for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So we see that Christ is an individual, the Christ that we know of, Jesus the Christ, was that individual back in the old days with that did all those horrific things to Egypt. That did all those things to us and our ancestors, and we did not obey him. That was Christ that did all that. Keep going. But with many of them. God was not well pleased, uh -huh. for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Right, because he killed a lot of people in the wilderness. Keep going. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. So we see that the writer is letting us know that we should take heed to what happened in the past, because that's our example. Right. Because the same individual that did that back then will do it again in the future. Right. That's what we see here. Verse 7. Neither be ye idolaters. As were some of them. Uh -huh. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Right, we can see that. We can see exactly what he's talking about there when he said, uh, build, hey, Aaron, once you build up this animal right here, I can't remember what the animal it is right now. Once you build this thing up for me. And they, he was like, all right, give me all your earrings, break it all down. That's, that's what he's speaking of as right now. That's idolatry right there. Verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication. Commit fornication because we were married to Jesus Christ. We we're still married to God. So us serving other gods is us committing fornication, right. spiritual fornication. Right. And we were also during this time was been, uh, committed physical fornication as well. Because verse 8 is speaking about a different time. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and what? And fell in one day. Three and twenty thousand. Right, we can read in another scripture. It gives you an off number, and he's just rounding it about, kind of like nowadays. We be talking. We say, "Hey, I'm gonna be there like around like ten thirty. We show up at ten forty-five. And man, you there? <laughs> so we happy to be here. Right. Right? right. Same thing. He just rounding it up. Right. Man, you owe me ten fifty. I'm gonna say, bro, you owe me eleven dollars. Right. Right. Round it up. So I say that that happened here. Verse nine. Neither let us tempt Christ. As some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Uh huh, so we can see that was Christ. Keep going. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Uh huh, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they were uh, written for our admonition. So this, these things were written for our admonition. He could have not wrote these things, we'd be going forth blinded, not knowing what God we serve. Not knowing what God we're dealing with. These are our examples so we can see who God is. Yeah, he's the king of peace, but he's bringing war. And he brought war back then, and he's going to do it in the future. Keep going. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Uh-huh. Let's go to, uh, let's go to um, Exodus now. Let's go to Exodus 15. So we're going to go back and look at right when they came out of Egypt. And we're going to listen to a song that they sung about the Lord, which we now know, which is Jesus the Christ, who is in the same breath, the same form of Melchizedek. Matter of fact, he was more of a Melchizedek back then, right, because he didn't come in the flesh as of yet. It was years later he came in the flesh, trying to show us how we can strive to that same royalty as he did. So this is Sam right here, the King of Peace. Exodus 15. Exodus 15 and verse 1. Go ahead. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Uh-huh. So they sing a song. They're going down, jamming, right? 
Verse 2. The Lord is my strength and song. Uh huh. And he has become my salvation. So the Lord is our salvation. Keep going. He is my God, and I will prepare him in habitation. Prepare him in, in habitation. My father's God, and I will exalt him. Uh huh. And I will exalt him. Verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is a man of who? The Lord of war. So this Lord is the man of war. So I told him, God, I told that to one of the Gentiles before. I'm like, hey, man, you know, he's a man of war. He ain't a man of war. <laughs> nah, man, he kills people. Nah, that was the old God. Nah, that's one of the same. <laughs> he is the man of war. You can't read that. I read it. He was like, oh, that's something, that's something different. Your, your interpretation is wrong. I'm like, nah, you just don't want to take heed that the guy that you hoping that will give you peace is the same God that will give you the sword. Right. You don't wanna you don't wanna think that that's a possibility. Like I would give my daughter some candy, I also give my daughter a whooping. But you don't wanna deal with me. Right. She's gonna deal with the mom. Right, right. That's that's how we looking at everything. Right. And now we have to see who we dealing with. Right, same. He is the man of war. The Lord is the man of war. Keep going. Pharaoh's chariots. Right, it says it says the Lord is his name. The Lord is the man of war. The Lord is his name. Keep going. Pharaoh's chariots and his host have he cast into the sea. So this is the immediately after he did these things. So we know what he's talking about. He's talking about the same thing that we read in 1 Corinthians 10, which that was Christ. It was him that did all that. He, he threw them in the sea. Keep going. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. This God will drown you. Bro, that's scary. You know, I'm not the best swimmer. That's one of my fears to be drowned. That's a problem right there. This boy will drown you. Yeah, go ahead and try to flee to the wilderness if you want to. I know you can't swim. <laughs> I'm going to drown you if you don't do what I say. Keep going. The depths have covered them. Uh huh. They sank into the bottom of a, as a stone. <laughs> they sink. Now, how cruel is that that you're thinking about it? That's even more cruel. Like, when I whoop my son, and my, I, see my, I see Jordan over there smiling. That's how I see this right here. <laughs> they probably about thinking about it. Like, hey, this is what our God did to us. Yeah, yeah my dad whooped you because you took my toy. It's the same thing they do. <laughs> Keep going. Thy right hand, O oh Lord, is become glorious in power. Where you at? Six. 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 Okay, keep going. Thy right hand, O oh Lord, is become glorious in power. His right hand is become glorious in power. Who's that right hand? The right hand, O oh Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. So we know who that right hand is. That's that another piece of that. That's that Jesus. Keep going. And in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Uh huh. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. Keep going. Verse 8. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood up, stood upright as a, as a heap, and the depths were con congealed in the heart of the sea. So the same individual that killed them is the same ones that saved them. So we see him using his both his hats. Yeah, I will give you the sword. I will also give you the helping hand if you do what I say. It's the same song telling you what happened. In that time, it's just telling you backwards. First, it's like, yeah, he killed everybody. And then it's talking about how he saved everybody. Because he's the king of peace. But he brings war. That's how he get his peace to it. That's how he get his kingdom established. By bringing war. That's the only language we understand. Yeah. Keep going. Verse 9. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. Uh -huh. I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. Uh -huh. Thou didst blow with thy, with thy wind. The sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. Uh -huh. So after he did what he did so he could save everybody, we ran through. Egyptians trying to run through us, and then he drowned them all. That's what we read about. That's that song. Let's go to 2 Peter. Let's go to 2 Peter 3. So we see that Christ in action. We saw what he did in the past. So it shouldn't be that much of a jump or a guess to say that the king of peace will bring war. Because that's what he did back then. And he changed not. He the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we're going to see what will happen in the future. Because he told us what he's going to do. And that's how you know you're somebody. Like, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do and see if you can stop it. That's how you know you're somebody. 
2 Peter 3 and 1. 3 and 1. Go ahead. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you. So if it's the second epistle, the second of Peter. Keep going. In both which I stir up your, your pure minds by way of remembrance. So Peter is writing them, just let them know, just like the author of Hebrews did. I'm trying to remind you of what happened in the back of the day. Verse 2. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. Uh -huh. And of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Keep going. Knowing this first. That there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Uh huh. So that's the days we are looking at now. Scoffers walking out, walking about after their own lusts. Keep going. And saying, "Where is the promise of His coming?" Uh huh. So that's what people say all the time. They always try to scoff at me. Jesus, Jesus coming today yet? Oh, Jesus, Jesus supposed to come in two thousand. I never say that. The Bible never said that. You listen to somebody else because you're not reading the book. But yet you see them scoffing. They don't, they don't believe it's coming. So Peter let them know, hey, be mindful of what everybody else wrote about because this day is coming even though during the last days people won't believe it. Knowing, the, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, verse 4. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? Uh -huh. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. That's absolutely right. It's getting worse, but that's right. Verse 5. For this they willingly are ignorant. For they are ignorant of this one thing. Keep going. Of that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Uh-huh. Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. Talk about days of Noah. So who did that? Jesus did that. That same God that is your peace, not the Father. The Father never dealt with man. We can read that in John. Mm -hmm. He never dealt with man, but I can tell you and show you in the scripture where God is standing right in front of Abraham, raining fire and brimstone from another God out of heaven. I can show you and read you in the Bible where 70 elders sat down and saw God and ate with them. That was the same God you have always dealt with. The God of peace that will bring more. The God of peace that will kill you. He want peace, but he will kill you. So he talking about Noah, verse seven. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store. Uh -huh. So now it's kept in store for what? Reserved unto the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And that's what we're gonna read Ooh. next. He said, I come to bring fire. You think I come to bring peace? No, I came to bring fire. And then he turned around and said, I still wait till we read it, but I'm excited, I'm gonna say it anyways. He said, <laughs> I come to bring fire. You thought I came to bring peace? Nah. And I hope, I wish I could do it now. Mm -mm. That's the God we chill with. He said, I wish I could kill you right now, but I gotta wait. It's like I do my things first. We're gonna read it next. But nevertheless, it says, uh, by the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Verse 8. Can you see there? No, it's there. Verse 8, it says, uh, no, matter of fact, where we at? Is that it? No, that was it, seven. Was it. That's it? Okay, with seven is it, you already left. Let's go to uh, Luke. Let's go to Luke 12. Now, let's go ahead and read this real quick. Luke 12. Because Peter said, hey, all this stuff right now is reserved until fire. Let's see how our Lord say that. Luke 12. 49. And pick it up at 49. Luke 12 and 49. Go ahead. I am come to send the I have come to send fire on the earth. So this is written in red. You letting you know off top. I come to send fire. That's the whole point of me doing all this. I'm trying to get all y'all trapped up. Believe in me if you want to, don't. He said he a stumbling block. He blinds the individuals because if he don't speak in parables, the ones that he wanna get, they will see. Right. <laughs> <laughs> think about that. I don't think, think about that. Yeah, man. I'm talking to you like I'm talking to you in slang because I don't want them to know what I'm talking about. Right, right. Because <laughs> they know what I'm talking about, they might get their ass together. <laughs> he said, he said, I come with fire. He said, I come to send fire on the earth. And what? And what will I 
if it be already kindled. <laughs> Man, I wish it would start right now. I wish I could kill this fire right now. But will I if it be already kindled? Keep going. 50. But I have a baptism to be baptized with. But there's something I need to do first. <laughs> If I, oh, I want to, but something because don't forget what he told the pilot. He was like, man, this ain't my kingdom. If it was my kingdom, my servants would fight. Yeah. Like, this dude is a man of war here. He's not someone you can just bully around. He's not that sweet and cuddly Jesus that, you know, you, you, you just keep messing up and you can go to him. No, my daughter keeps messing up too many times. She's going to get this whooping. Right. The same thing with us. We mess up too many times. He might just let you get hit by a car. <laughs> <laughs> We think it's different, he think it's one and the same. You know, we made you live forever anyway. It's just like, you just asleep here, then once you wake up, then I'm gonna give you that eternal punishment. But he said, uh, but, I have a back to, I, but I have a baptism to be baptized with first, keep going. And how am I straightened till it be uh, accomplished? Um, read verse 51, I know it's not up in there, read it. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. Uh huh. I tell you, nay. But rather division. So he didn't come and give peace, he come and bring division. Now it starts talking about specifically division in the household, but we have to understand if the Lord based the church based on the family, right? The head of the household and everything else because how he is, you know, like the last lesson I did, Christ the head, everything else, so he modeled the whole family after that. So that's the same way how the world is low-key set up in the sense that it's all modeled after what Christ did and the head being the household. And if he comes to, to send the vision on the whole earth, starting from the house, starting from the family, you know it's gonna seep out into the real world. You know he's gonna cause the vision in the real world. That's why he came. He came so you can choose. Choose me or choose somebody else. There's only one in the other. You can't walk the tightrope. And, when, and then even if you try to walk the, walk the tightrope, that's a decision in itself. I'm killing you already. My way or the highway? Now that's a dictatorship. You know, if I tell my wife, hey, my way or, my, or the highway? Oh, you can't say that. Oh, you can't do that. God did. My way or the highway? You choose. Let's go to Isaiah uh, 4. So he said, I come. Luke 4. Luke 4, right? Luke 4. He said that, uh, Luke 4, he said, I come to send fire on the earth and what I wish was already kindled, but I have a baptized, I have a baptism I have to be baptized with first. Let's go look at this baptism. Which led to death. But let's see some of the things he had to do before he could bring that fire upon the earth. Luke 4 and verse 16. Luke 4 and 16. Go ahead. And he came to Nazareth. And where he had been brought up, where he had been brought up, uh -huh. and as his customs was. So he's from Nazareth, like oh, I say, that's like Compton or uh, Chicago or Baltimore. Like, so, uh, so already you have to understand that if he's from that neck of the woods, he don't want to be played with. But, <laughs> but people don't understand that for whatever reason they just think he's cuddly or whatever. Nah, you know if I walk down the street, you hold your purse. You look more rugged than me. <laughs> So what you gonna do when you see him, right? But he said, uh, at Jesus, uh, verse 15, no, 16, right? right? And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Keep going. And as his cousin was, he went into the synagogue on, on the Sabbath day and stood up for it to read. He did what on the Sabbath day? Stood up to oh, read. Oh man, so praise God, we're doing it right. There's a lot of people that's not. We following after his footsteps. So he stood up on the Sabbath day to read verse 17. And there was and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. Uh -huh. So this is the book of Isaiah, the yeah. same book that we have that we're going to read right after we leave here. Right? That, that's the blessing that we can read the same thing that he read. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Yes, the same information that he had, we have at our fingertips right here. Yes. That's what it said in Deuteronomy 29. 29. I give you everything that you need to know. Everything else is a secret. And all things we need to know is right here. And right here it says, he will come back and kill you. You know what he said. <laughs> <laughs> and there was delivered to him a book, the prophet Isaiah. Keep going. And when he had, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Uh-huh, what it say? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach 
the gospel to the poor. Uh huh. So he had to preach the gospel to the poor. Keep going. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Uh huh. To pre to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. Uh huh. To set it at liberty them that are uh, bruised. So he come to bring light. He come to save people. He come to show his power, so he can have individuals turn to him, turn to the truth. Verse nineteen. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse twenty. And he closed the door, uh, closed the book, uh -huh. and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the uh -huh. eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Uh, all eyes on Jesus. Keep going. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. So he read Isaiah 61. And that's what we're going to read right now. But we read right after he finished to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, he closed the book. That is in the middle of a sentence. He did not finish that sentence. There's a reason why he didn't finish that sentence. Because if he finished that sentence, I wouldn't be surprised if the League of Angels came and started killing people off right then and there. <laughs> because the, we're going to read what the sentence says. The sentence says that, hey, we're going to read it. I'm not going to paraphrase it. Let's go to Isaiah 61. There's a reason why he closed that book. Isaiah 61. He said he'd come to bring fire, and he wished that was already kindled. But he had to be baptized with the baptism first. And he did all that. That's what he came to do. So now we have to be mindful of what is coming next. Kind of like what Peter was preaching in Acts 2. And he came to do that. And now we are in Joel times where, well, Joel prophesied of these times, but we are prophesied of different tongues. And what comes next? The great and notable day of the Lord. And that's what we're going to read here. Isaiah 61 to verse 1. <coughs> Isaiah 61 and 1. Go ahead. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. So we can see that the verbiage is a little bit different. Let's not get hung up on the small things. We get some people, oh, brother, virgin don't mean virgin, or this means that. Look, the book was translated from Genesis all the way to Revelation in different languages. Praise the most high God, we can read in English now. Right? None of that other stuff matters. From what we read in Isaiah to what we read in Luke are two different languages. That's why the verbiage are a little bit different, but the point still is driven home. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Keep going. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, uh -huh. to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Uh -huh. What else? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he calls the book. But if you keep reading, what else do it say? And the day of vengeance of our God. That's why he had to close the book. Because if he had to, if he fulfilled that right then and there, we wouldn't be here right now. That was it. But he closed the book because he had to do this first before he come and bring war. That doesn't mean that he's a soft and cuddly God. He just following directions. <laughs> Right? He's just following directions. If someone say, every side, you can't do this until you do this first. That's the rules. That's all that he did. He's the same God that we read that drowned all of Exodus, all of Egypt. The same God that sent serpents upon the children of Israel. That same God. When 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 no boy uh, killed an individual because of fornication up in Numbers, when he did all that stuff, the Lord was pleased with that. Now, I'm not good with names, so excuse me. Y'all might know the name more than I do. But nevertheless, he was pleased with that. Can you imagine that? Like, you cut off somebody's head, and somebody like, yeah, bro, good job. <laughs> now you cut off somebody's head, they're like, oh, my goodness, what did you do? I saw you the mind state of God. He had a different mind state, bro. He killed babies. It's a whole different mindset. We see babies like, oh, precious. He see baby like, man, he this dude going to cause me some problems. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead and get we can go ahead and get rid of him. Right. <laughs> kind of like Thanos. If Thanos is real, he probably would have got rid of Thanos. Right. right. <laughs> but nevertheless, it says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. And then what happened? To comfort all that mourn. Let's go out that. So I'm going to come and love on you, then I'm going to kill you, then I'm going to love on you again. <laughs> Confusing. I can only imagine how my daughter feels. Like, I don't know. Jordan, come here. Oh, no. I don't like that tone. <laughs> 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 oh, oh no. It's the same thing here. The same exact thing. Read verse 3. 
to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, uh -huh. to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil, oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, uh -huh. that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. That he might be glorified. No, he is no doubt the king of peace, but he is very conditional. He's only the king of peace if you do what he tells you to do. If you don't, he's the king of war. He's a man of war. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 13. Let's go look at this war that he will be bringing now. Isaiah 13. Let's go snapshot to the future. And we're going to look at this war that he will be bringing. Now, hopefully, I kind of feel the void of Melchizedek and Jesus, understanding that they wanted the same. Right? And hopefully, I feel the void that you know that, hey, God was the God of the Old Testament, and that's the war that he's going to bring. That's the, that's the war that he brought. It's the same individual. Now, that same individual is going to bring this war, which is who we know of as Jesus. Isaiah 13 and 6. Isaiah 13 and 6. Go ahead. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. So this is that, this is that day of vengeance that he read in Isaiah 61, that he... Well, that was written in Isaiah 61 that he did not read in Luke. This is that day of business. Verse 7. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, uh -huh. and they shall be afraid. Pains and sorrows shall take hold of them. Why afraid of what? Why are you afraid of sweet Jesus? Keep going. <laughs> they shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed at, at one another. Their faces shall be as flames. They red as that. They don't know what to expect. Now, behold, the day of the Lord cometh. It's coming, and, and, and what is the day of the Lord? Cruel. The both. day of the Lord is cruel. That's why it says, man, woe to you that wish upon the day of the Lord. Mm. The day of the Lord is cruel. We better hope we want the right side of it. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger. He's just up there masking his anger. As of right now, keep going. To lay the land desolate. To lay the land desolate. It says in the Psalms, it's gonna be the place is gonna be filled with dead bodies. That's Melchizedek rule. That's what we're reading now. This is that time, and that time is closer to us than you think. We are in these last days. Keep going. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Uh huh. Verse ten. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. Uh huh. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth. And the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Pure darkness. It won't be nearly as light as it is now, once this day happens. We also can read in other places that says the sun will scorch a third part of the man. Right. So it's going to be so bad that he won't even have the sun ain't been burning half of these people. I don't want to deal with them. I'm going to come back and get my get back with him and with him. So half the people are already going to be dead before he even show up. Keep going. Verse 11. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. Uh, that's why he said he wished he could do it now. That's what they look for. I wish I could happen. I could do this right now. Because it was evil back then. It's probably just that same, if not worse now. Keep going. I will, and I will cause the uh, arrogancy of the proud to cease uh -huh. and will lay low the haughtiness of the, of the terror. Keep going. I will, I will make a man more precious than the fine gold, uh -huh. even a man that than the golden wedge of Ophir. It's going to be more gold wedge of Ophir than it is of men. That's how many of us he will kill off. It's like two billion people on this earth right now. He's killing off everybody. So we better hope we on that right side, because we could be that everybody he kill off. Like I said before, we, we have some understanding where the wilderness is and what we need to do. Try to get there if you want to. If you not, if you don't like you, man, what, you can't swim? You drown. <laughs> uh, what? What's wrong with you? You scared of animals? Barry won't eat you. Simple. So we gotta make sure we're on that right side. Keep going. Verse 13. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place uh -huh. in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Uh -huh. It will be a crazy earthquake. Everything is shaken. Verse 14. And it shall be as the, as the chase roll, and as a sheep that no man taketh, taketh up. Uh -huh. they, sh they shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. We all be going back to our own land. Verse 15. 
Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. Everyone that is found shall be thrust. Let me see you on that day. Ooh, let me see you on that day. I wish you would let me see you. That's what he's saying. Everyone that is found will be thrust through. Everyone. Man, that's, why, that's why Job said, hide me in the grave until your wrath pass. That's why he said what he said. So we have to have understanding. We, I hope I'm alive when Jesus Christ comes back, but I only want to be alive if we're on the right track. Because he said everyone that he sees will be thrust through. And I don't want to be that everyone. Right. Keep going. And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. <laughs> oh, that, that's your girl? Oh, she did too. <laughs> Everybody did. That's your kids? Oh, she cute. She did too. <laughs> the harlots. You know, you know, he had no never mind, bro. Like, like what the old school players say. I have no never mind, man. I'm going to get you. Keep going. The children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. <laughs> that's what I was playing. Before that, their eyes, I'm going to dash your children to pieces. That, that's heartless. Your, your poor child getting caught up because something you did. Right. That's, that's horrible. Yes, it is. Keep going. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Uh -huh. Behold, I will stir up the meat against them. Which shall not regard silver, and as, as for gold, they shall not delight in it. So he went to step back. Before he show up, he gonna have his army come back and get, get, get people. So he, he so you got the earth giving people all they got. You got armies giving people all they got. You got, and then if you're trying to do what that said the Lord, but you're not fully committed, you're getting got by the Roman Empire, the beast and the false prophet. You're also gonna get got by the Medes and the Persians. And he, and if you survive all that, you still gotta see him when he get back. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying. So, Lord willing, we in the wilderness. Lord willing, we in the, or we here, we just, you know, we want the good gods. Keep going. Verse eighteen. Eighteen. Their bowls also shall dash the young men to pieces. Uh huh. And they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. I don't care if she's pregnant, bro. She's getting this work. I don't care. Keep going. Their eyes shall not spare children. Uh huh. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency shall be as when God overthrew Solomon and Gomorrah. <laughs> it's gonna be as good as I threw, overthrew Solomon and Gomorrah. Keep going. Verse twenty. It shall never be inhabited. Uh huh. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. So Babylon is one of the other places like Edom that's gonna be nothing after everything is finished. Keep going. Neither shall the Arabian pinch tent there. Uh huh. Neither shall the shepherds make their hope their and, fold. There. And Arabians are they are nomads. They they will go anywhere. He so. said this place gonna be so de so desolate even the nomads won't go over there. <laughs> so that's how you gonna lay that place down. 21. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, uh -huh. and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, uh -huh. and owls shall dwell there. You got all nasty critters in your houses now, and you got owls, you got creatures and everything, you scared as hell. Keep going. And satyrs shall dance there, uh -huh. and the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, Keep going. and dragons in their pleasant places. And her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. Yeah, that time is near to come. This is back in Isaiah. Isaiah wrote, that time is near. This is, what, a few thousand years after Isaiah. It's more near than what we think. Let's go to Revelation 19. Revelation 19. This is that king of peace that we're reading about. This is that war that he's bringing. Revelation 19. In verse 11. Revelation 19. And 11. So let's see the work that he will do once he get here. Because in, uh, in Genesis it says that he's going to have his vesture dipped in blood. Let's see that. 1911. Go ahead. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him, him was called faithful and true. So this is who we know of as Jesus. Keep going. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. In righteousness he does, he does and make war. Twelve. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh huh. And on his head were many crowns. Uh huh. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So so much on these name calling. 
Yasuba, Josiah, I don't know, whatever. You know, so much of it because he's going to come back with a name no one knows. We just, I call him Jesus because the book says his name Jesus. Period. Verse, verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. That's where that, what we read in Genesis 49, that's where you get that from. Yeah, he come with a donkey at first. Afterwards, his vesture is dipped in blood. A lot of killing he doing. Keep going. And his name is called the Word of God. Uh-huh, that's another name you see. The Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The identify, it's the same thing from Genesis Revelation. Nothing is changing. It's easy to identify, you just don't want to read. Either A, you don't want to read, or like the homie I know, he want to do it, but he's too scared to do it because he like his lifestyle already. So you don't want that change. Hey, I respect that more than somebody who's faking. You just know what's coming. All right, you know, all right, whatever. All right. On, on to the next one. Right? It says, uh, verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. <laughs> they got armies up there. Your armies ain't nothing. Follow him with white horses. Keep going. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Keep going. And so, out. so his, his vesture is already dipped in blood, and the army's already coming. So he already did some work already. Like, man, y'all just now getting to him? These, these are angels. So imagine how he moved. He moved with the quickness for real, for real. Yes, he is. Verse 14, uh, 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Uh huh. That with it he should smite the nations. Uh huh. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. Same thing we read in Psalms 110. Keep going. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Keep going. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh-huh, that's what we read, man. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Keep going. 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. Uh-huh. And he cried with a loud voice. <laughs> and so what did he cry with all the When he cried, what happened? Keep going. Saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven. Uh-huh. Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Oh, he killed so many people. He's going to have all these fowls eat up the dead bodies. You're not even going to have a burial, bro. After I did it, hey, man. The supper of the great God. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. 18. That ye may eat the flesh of kings uh -huh. and the flesh of captains uh -huh. and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses. You got the pole horse dead. <laughs> horse has nothing to do with anything, bro. You got the horses dead. Keep going. And of them that sit on him uh -huh. and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, uh -huh. both small and great. I don't care who you are. And I'm, not, I'm not a respected person. We can be Jew, Israel, Greek. I don't care who you are. You, if you want this work, you want this work. I got you. You get all the smoke. Verse 19. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse. And after all that, they still trying to fight this man. All right. Good luck. Keep going. And against his army. Uh-huh. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. Uh-huh. Which, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image. Uh -huh. These both were cast alive into a, a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So he, they skipped the first death, went straight to the second death for him. I'm about to show you how mad he is. Right. Straight, because the first death is nothing but a part of our eternal existence in a sense, because man was made to live forever. Though we die, you know, the Lord said, I am, uh, he said, I am the God of Abraham, God of Jacob. I'm the God of the living, not the dead as if they still live in the presence with him, though they're dead. He is. He's eternal. So he skipped the grave and threw them straight to the lake of fire. That's some serious anger he had with them. Like, I don't want you to, bro, you know, you dead, dead. Like, for real, for real. Go on. Just go ahead and walk. Go ahead. Keep going. Verse 21. 21. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, uh -huh. which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So, <laughs> that's crazy. Now let's go to uh, let's go to Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel. So let's see what happened after all that. After he killed so many people, after the fowls had a food, there's still dead bodies laying around. They can't eat all of them. That's the sad part. There's still dead bodies around. We're going to see that. Ezekiel 9, 39, and verse, I got 8, 11. 11. 
Ezekiel 39 and verse 11. Ezekiel 39 and 11. Go ahead. And it came to pass, and it shall come to pass in that day. All right, so on that same day, right, when he come back, that I will give unto God a place there of graves in Israel, uh -huh. the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea, and it shall stop the noses of the passengers, and there shall they bury God in all his multitude, and they shall call it the valley of Hamad God. Uh -huh. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying of them, that they may cleanse the land. So seven months after all that stuff happened, you got seven months and you just bury people. This man with the business, bro. This is the God of war. The king of peace brings war. That same God. Seven months. Israel burying people so you can clean the land. Nothing can happen to the land, to the land clean. Verse 13. Yeah. All the people of the land shall bury them. Uh-huh. And it shall be to them a renown the day. Uh, a, a renown the day. A, I shall be glorified, saith the Lord uh -huh. God. Uh-huh. He did all that so you can get some respect on his name. <laughs> Seriously. So I can be glorified. What? Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine that? Man, why you shoot him? Because I want you to know who I am. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I love you right here. <laughs> Keep going. Verse 14. And they shall sever out men of continued employment. Uh -huh, so they go on. Hey, man. You need a job? All right, bro. I got you. We're going to go bury these cats. Oh, you need a job, too? You, too, bro. Keep going. Passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth. And so only, it's going to be, what do you say? Uh, man going to be less, be less man on the earth than the golden bridge of the Ophir. So the little man that they had when they built burying all those dead bodies. That's, that's, some, that's some work, bro. That's so I was like, man, we got to get some back right. Keep going. To cleanse it. After the end of seven months shall they search. Uh huh. Verse 15. And the passengers that pass through the land, when any see of the man's bone, <laughs> then shall he set up a sign by it. Uh -huh, so if you see a bone, just put a sign so it's easy for me to see when I go by. So I go ahead and pick it up. Keep going. Till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Hamanagoth. Uh huh. So keep going. And also the name of the city shall be Hamanah. Hamanah. Uh huh. Thus shall they cleanse the land. Keep going. Seventeen. And thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God, speak unto every feathered fowl and to every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves and come. Gather yourselves on every side. This is how we know it's like the, this is how we know it's the same tongue. This is exactly how we know it's the same tongue, because this is the, the, the great supper of God right here. All these fowls gonna be eating the dead. So you're gonna have fowls eating dead people and you burying people for seven months. All because you made God mad. That's crazy. That's a, That's a lot of people. That's that king of peace. That's your king of peace, bro. Uh, that's my king of peace? Gosh, please. <laughs> You're the king of peace. Then you, this is what you do. Okay. Keep going. That I, I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye make eat flesh and drink blood. You're going to drink the blood too, man. Ain't no more water. Go ahead and drink the blood. 18, go ahead. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth. Uh -huh. Of rams, of lambs, and of goats, and of bullocks, all of them uh, fatlings of Bashan. Uh -huh. 19. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full. He's talking to them like it's like chicken or something. <laughs> like, like he's giving them, the Lord giving them the dietary law during that time. You can eat all the kings. You can eat all, eat everything. It's okay. Ain't no law against that, bro. Eat it. The fat things are the fat. I don't want no sacrifice to this. That's all for you. Keep going. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full, and uh -huh. drink blood till ye be drunken. Uh huh. And my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. Uh huh. It's kind of it's kind of funny because animals die and all that stuff because we messed up. So now it's kind of like payback. It's like I right, now I kill all of them and you can go have get get your payback before we keep going forward. Verse twenty. 
Thus ye shall be filled, filled at my table with horses and chariots, uh -huh. with mighty men, and with all men of war, saith the Lord God. Keep going. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid upon them. That's why he's the king of peace, because he's a man of war. And after what he finished, everybody was like, no, nah, I want no business with that. So we all going to be cool, man, be cool, bro. I'm sorry, man, be cool. <laughs> That's exactly how it's gonna happen. Exactly, man. How long is using slavery, huh? Have it all, bro. Go on. Be cool. Tell your God, my bad. Keep going. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day and forward. Uh huh. Twenty-three. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Uh huh. Because they trespassed against. So the heathen gonna know they in that situation because of me. Because right now, you got some that think they did something. Right. You know what I'm saying? They think that, oh, well, we're stronger. That's why you're in that captivity. Or right. now you got some stuff in the history books like, oh, well, the African-Americans migrated over here. Right, no. right. They in this captivity because I put them there. Right. That's what's going to happen after this time. This is that peace that we're starting to see after all the war. Keep going. Therefore, I hid my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies, so fell they all by the sword. Uh-huh. 24. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them, and hid my face from them. Keep going. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, now will I again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, uh -huh. and will be jealous for my holy name. It said, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob, meaning I'm going to bring them back all over again and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous of my holy name all over again. 26. After that, they have borne their shame and all their trespasses, trespasses whereby they have trespassed uh -huh. against me uh -huh. when they dwelt safely in their land. So now they can dwell safely in their land. So now we see the king of peace coming, making war, and we see what's happened afterwards. We see the peace now. Keep going. And none made them afraid. All right, we, we, we're on a down end now. Let's go to uh, Micah 4. Micah 4 and verse 1. So now we see that king of peace here. We saw that he brought war. Now we see the good, the peace that we all are expecting. And notice, you didn't go to heaven for it. You stayed right here. <laughs> you stayed right here. People think you go off to heaven and fly around like an angel. That's how you're going to get your peace. Good luck. You were even created to be an angel. All right. Make no sense. Micah 4 and 1. Go ahead. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. Uh huh. And it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. So this is right after that war. After he killed everybody, now we see in that peace. So everybody's going to come to Israel to get some knowledge and understanding and figure out who this God is. Man, I thought you was, was all the lovey-dovey type. Man, who are you? Who are these people to you? And all those questions will be answered. Verse 2. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. Uh -huh. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his uh, past. That's a, that's a beautiful day. Everybody wants to say, let's go to Zion so we can do what he said. Keep going. For the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. It says in uh, Psalms, the rod will be going forth from Zion rule. The king going to be out of Zion rule. We're seeing it. He's going to be in Zion ruling in there. Him and his prince David. They're both going to be there holding down the shop until the father comes down. Verse 3. And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar of off. Uh -huh. And they shall beat their swords into uh, plowshares. So they don't want to fight no more. After all that work, I ain't trying to fight. No, you can have my gun. I'm going to make my gun into a fishing hook or something. I'm going to do something else with this thing. He said he shall, they said he will change his uh, swords to what is it, plow. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar of off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, keep going. And their spears into pruning hooks. Uh -huh. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. And after I finish you, man, y'all don't want to do none of this. I'm going to show you how to fight. You know, everybody want to 
Oh, I'll show you what beef is. Kind of like that Biggie song. What's beef? I'll show you what beef is. This ain't no beef. I'll show you exactly what it is. Keep going, verse 4. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree. So ain't gonna be no war. Y'all will be chilling. Up in the shade. Getting some understanding. Keep going. And for the mouth. He said, for they shall sit every man under the vine of the fig tree. And none shall make them afraid. Uh -huh. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts have spoken it. Now let's go to Psalms 122. Psalms 122. We're almost done. Psalms 122. Psalms 122 and verse 1. 22, Psalms 122 and 1. Go ahead. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So when they said, hey, let us go into the house of the Lord. So I was happy when they said, what? Okay, cool. Let's go. Keep going. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Uh -huh, I'm going to be right there. Keep going. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Uh-huh. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel. So the tribes still want to be there. Keep going. To give thanks unto the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. For there are set thrones of judgment and the, thr the thrones of the house of David. For there are set thrones of judgment. So there's more than one judge that's going to be on, which is going to be there, but that's a different lesson. The thrones of the house of David, verse 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Man, pray for this peace, guys. You want it? Pray for it. Hopefully you get it. Do, do with us, say the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Keep going. They shall prosper that love thee. Uh-huh. Peace be upon, peace be with then with peace be within thy walls. Uh -huh. Peace gonna be within the walls and what else? And prosperity within thy palaces. Everybody gonna be doing good right now. Everybody hurt. Everybody gonna be doing good. Everybody gonna be relaxing, chilling. I ain't gotta worry about no bill collectors. Nobody knocking on my door. We be chilling. I can go to Walmart. I ain't gotta worry about getting shot. <laughs> Keep going. Verse eight. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will now say. Peace be within thee. Uh -huh. During that time, I would for sure say peace, bro. Now we say peace as a hope. Man, peace in Jesus' name, man. Hopefully be I. This time, I can for sure say peace. Because that's what it's going to be. Everybody's going to be living good. Verse 9. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. I will seek thy good. Zechariah 8. Now we're going to get some specifics in these peace. Zechariah 8. And verse 1. Zechariah 8 and 1. When you get there, bro, go ahead. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy. And I was jealous for her with great fury. Uh huh. Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion. So I'm back now. Keep going. And will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Uh huh. That, you know exactly where I'm gonna be at. Keep going. And Jerusalem called, and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. Keep going. And the mountain of the Lord of hosts, of holy mountain. Verse four. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, there shall yet old men and old women. Dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, uh -huh. and every man with his staff in his hand. So people ain't dying age. for cancer, people ain't dying for AIDS, people ain't dying none of that stuff. You all living good. Old age. Travis is young compared to them. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, Dolly ain't here, so I, I, I did it for him. <laughs> That's it, the Lord of hosts. There's a yet, there's a yet old man and old woman dwell in the streets of Jerusalem. And every man with his staff in his hand for very age, very old age, they'll be there. Verse 5. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. That's crazy. They're all outside playing. Now everybody in the house playing video games. I don't want my kid to go out there because I don't know what's going to happen to him. He might get taken by some pedophile. This might happen. That might happen. Not, not at this time. Everybody out there playing. Just be home for the light street lights come on. <laughs> Just play. Verse 6. Thus said the Lord of hosts. If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, 
Should it also be marvelous in, in my eyes? If it's marvelous the for them, you know it's marvelous for me. I seen y'all going through all of this. Right. Keep going, Stella. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. Uh huh. So don't forget, he came to save Israel first. But yet he will save everybody else at the same time. He's, it's for everybody. But he came to save him first. So he will save his people, and then everybody going to flock to Jerusalem. And then they will understand how it needs to be done. Once again, we will be the heads. Lord willing. I will be there, Lord willing, so I say. It's going to happen, Lord willing, I'll be there. It says, that's in the Lord of hosts. Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. Eight. And I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Uh-huh. And they shall be my people. And I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Verse 9. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong. Ye that hear in these days these words by, by the mouth of the prophets. Uh -huh. So he's talking to the individual in that day. Zechariah said, be strong. So same thing for us. Be strong. Hold on. Because this is what we're looking to. This is the rest we're looking to. Keep going. Which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built. Uh-huh. Verse 10. For therefore, for, for before these days there was no hire for man nor any hire for beasts. Neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. That's not in the days we in right now. People can't find jobs, people hurt, people don't like their jobs. Keep going. For I set all men and everyone against his neighbor. Uh -huh, I set that up. Everybody fight against each other. Verse 11. But now I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days. Uh-huh, so I'm gonna be like that to them. Like I was back in the day. I'm going to change. I'm going to be different. Keep going. Says the Lord of hosts. For the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit. And the ground shall give her increase. Even the, even the earth is going to be doing good. Keep and, it going. And the heavens shall give their due. And I shall, I will cause the remnant of this people to, to possess all these things. Uh -huh, 13. And it shall come to pass. That as ye were a curse among the heathen. O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing, fear not, but let your hands be strong. Stay strong in this. Can I fight for this? I do a lot of training. This is something to fight for, for real. All of us. Verse 14. For thus said the Lord of hosts, as I thought to punish you, when your fathers provoked me to wrath, said the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. So again, have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah, fear ye not. Uh -huh, we almost done 16. These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Uh huh. So that's how we're going to be. Every man going to be speaking truth to his neighbor. Keep going. Execute the truth of execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. Uh huh. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor, and love no false oath. For all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. Uh-huh, that's what Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11. We might do some skipping. Isaiah 11. And pick it up at verse... Uh, pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 11, verse 1. Isaiah 11 and 1. Go ahead. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Uh -huh. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit and of wisdom. Keep going. And understanding. And understanding. Keep going. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Uh -huh. Let's keep down in verse 6. So all this stuff will be, this is the branch that we'll be looking at during this time. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Right, so we skipped a few and we jumped straight into the, the wolf. So this is this is how the peace, this is the peace that we will see during that during that time. So he is the king of peace, no doubt. But like I said, he's coming to bring war first and foremost. Because he had to, to set everything in order. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lay down with the kid. Keep going. And the calf and the young lion and the fattening together. And a little child shall lead them. So you got uh, my little son leading all these crazy animals. This is how it's going to be. We won't have no thought of it. Verse 7. 
and the cow and the bear shall feed. Uh -huh. The young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. So the lion is not even eating meat anymore. Right. Verse 8. And the suckling child, sucking child shall play on the hole of the sack. Uh -huh. Play on the snakes. Keep going. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice, cockatrice den. Uh -huh. The weaned child, show you how young he is. Verse 9. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. So there will be no war, nobody's hurting, there's no destroying. This is true peace. This is how I know those Jews up in there now, who the ones who say that they Jews ain't the real Jews, because this is supposed to be happening. Once the Israelites or Jews are in their land, this will be peace like this. And it's not peace. We can read that in Ezekiel. David should be there. The Father, Jesus should be there. The temple should be there. Everybody should be going up there for the feast days. None of that stuff is happening. This is how I know this is not in that this time. And this is a future event. This is the rest that we are waiting for. Keep going. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea. Oh, honey, everybody going to know what thus said the Lord. Because we'll go up and ask him if we have a question. Verse 10. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Uh -huh. To it shall to it shall the Gentile seat, and his rest shall be glorious. Like I said before, it's for Israel, right? He saved Israel first. But after that, he's saving the whole world. The Gentiles want to go seek this peace. They're going to learn how to get it done. That's how that happened. He's go there. He's like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Let's learn what the knowledge of the Lord is. Let's learn this. Let's go, let everybody, let's, let's go to the temple. And then once they get that understanding, peace everywhere throughout the whole world. Psalms 46 is our last one. Oh, no, I, I don't want to like that. That's a, that's a typo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Psalm 46. So I went there to show you how the peace will be and how it's going to be throughout the whole world. Because all the other places we see Israel will be peaceful. Israel will be peaceful, which is true. And that's a big deal because now there's no peace there. But we also see that the Gentiles will seek that peace and the rest will be glorious. Everybody will be wet resting. Psalms 46 and verse 8. Go ahead. Come, behold the works of the Lord, that what desolations he hath made in the earth. Uh -huh, let's come see what he did, all the stuff he destroyed. Verse 9. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. Yeah, though he this dictator, he made a war stop. Keep going. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. Uh huh. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Uh huh. Be still and know that I am God. So be still. Understand who you're dealing with. This is God we're dealing with. This is the man of war. The king of peace is the man of war. So don't get it twisted. Keep going. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Everybody going to know who I am. You're going to exalt me. Verse 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. I hope you got some understanding. Of the truth.